Hello, Remnant Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 434. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, everyone. Um, we're having a great day here at Biblical Life, and I pray that you guys are are having such a wonderful day. Made it past the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at some more things concerning Time X because I, I'm convinced with what I've seen that this is uh, was supposed to be the beginning of Time X when uh, the elite said that they were going to take us over. You know, they were going to rule over everybody. And uh, I saw some things as I was looking through um, different videos and things uh, about, you know, have you ever seen people take their arms and make an X up in front of their chest and their their hands are, are clenched, and then they make an X? And I've seen preachers do that and and everything. Now, I, I am assuming they that that means something, uh, you know, that they're saying is a good thing. But um, I told Mike many years ago, what's it been, Mike, 20-something years ago? I said... And I did that symbol, and I said this, and I said, then you go down with it beside of you, and I said, that's a horrible thing. I said, this is something I've seen. And um, so it's one of the, th- the things that they do in Masonic lodges. Um, they use that X symbol and, and take their arms over each other uh, for the revelatory 17th degree of knights of the East and the West, and for others as well. As well. Uh, I also saw that X is a symbol for the sun god, uh, that's how, if you see those pictures of the Egyptian pharaohs, they have that same... Yeah, and that also, that also that, is supposed to show their identi- identifying with the, uh, uh, the resurrection of Osiris. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, it's all interwoven. X is the, the symbol for Tammuz. So like with, you know, when you see with, uh, kind of like the, the, they said it was the secular thing at Christmas where they do Xmas, that's actually the occult way of saying, no, this actually belongs to Tammuz and you guys mm. stole it. Well, I thought it was interesting what uh, what I found out, and and I I believe with all of my heart that uh, God revealed to me th- through this years ago that He He's not going to allow this to happen. This is not His timing for for the things that are getting ready to go on, um, and so that's good news for all of us. And and so I wanted to to just say that before I get into what God was showing me this next week, and then Mike's going to be talking about some the same thing in a different way. Um, we're in this time where obviously Satan is is on a rampage. We can see that. People are having such horrible things happen. I, I heard a minister this morning that was talking about uh, all the things that his wife had been through, and, and uh, they I think they came to the conclusion that it was a spirit of infirmity attacking her. Uh, but I mean, I, I hear one after another after another, you know, prayer requests for these things. So this is this is not an easy time we're in, and that's for sure. And and I do think that there there's high level of cult activity because they've been preparing for this time X uh, for a long time. <clears throat> I was kind of shocked at some of the responses that I saw on the the internet where the people were crying, and I. I mean, I guess it's it's a spectacular side. I didn't even pay attention to it. I just noticed, hey, it's getting darker. <laughs> and we were over here at the office doing things. We're busy working. Um, so, you know, it just wasn't a big thing to me. But but I think that, that this is so intermingled with what Satan's wanting to do right now. I think it was really catching people off guard or something. Um, so anyway, we made it through and... Um, this last week, God was. It, it's been quite a while since I've had any uh, uh, visions of things, and almost all the ones I get are either you know showing me something I need to pray over a person or the nation or something. And so, I can't. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I wanted to mention the things that God showed me, so you guys can be praying too. I saw trains being used as weapons. Um. And there's a lot of ways that could could happen because I mean those things have a lot of power just in in their movement, but I I think I can say this that I I think it was more to use that train to bring in maybe a, some kind of a, a deadly chemical 
or or maybe something that is a well, an explosive seen, that would well we've seen like in Pennsylvania the damage that can happen if there is toxic cargo on mm. and there's a train derailment right just how catastrophic that can be for but a, I mean, a local if, community so if this would be a planned event that that's things that yeah. that we can pray about and one of the, the ways I've been praying since God showed me that is is asking forgiveness for the sins of the railroad companies because there were lots of things done in the early days that were really horrible where they took the the trains through and you know people lose their land and they never got what it was worth um and there's a lot of times they were forced out i mean there's stories there's, about there's a lot of things about and people's so, houses being burned down and all kinds of stuff and to so make if way. anytime that there's there's sin involved with with land or corporations or whatever i believe that's the basis that satan can really use those things and anytime there's there are like terrorists or anybody there to use anything that the enemy knows to gather the demonic forces that have a legal right to work with that. And so if you'd be praying over that. Uh, I also um, was praying about a vision I saw about an attack on a, a dam. This was one dam I saw, but I'm thinking, well, if they would plan this for one, they might do other ones. Um, and so we can, uh, and then I also had, let me find it. Um Here it is. I had a friend send me uh, an alert from Steve Quayle, and it said it said this: Mid Eastern terror cells, according to background sources, have been given the go ahead to start their mayhem in the USA as the Iranian high command has headed to their secret bunkers with their aircraft responders turned off. Bridges, dams, and infrastructure plans are the highest priority targets along with any and all arms or defense manufacturing plants. So that was a confirmation to me. I got that um, on Sunday night. I read that. And so I thought, okay, we've got to beef up our prayers over these things. Um, The other thing that I saw was a huge drone being prepared to be used for destruction. And I, what I was telling Mike is, is it's the biggest thing that I've ever seen. I mean, I've not seen a drone this size. Now, he said that there are drones that have been prepared for military use. That yeah, are military s- use that are big enough that they can hold uh, either four either four or six, like Sidewinder or Hellfire missiles. And if I'm remembering right, I guess this was back during when we were going into uh, uh, Iraq, that somehow or another one of our bigger drones uh, crash landed in, in Iran and they took it and it was a big hubbub where, you know, we're demanding it back through secret technology. Well, it wouldn't take them long to take that thing apart and re- reverse engineer it. Cause right now a lot of the drones that even Russia is using are coming out of Iran. Well, it's, um, I, it, this, what I saw was bigger than anything I'd ever seen. You know, I've seen little, the drones even like, They'll look for a missing person over land, and, and those are yeah. bigger than well, the these, little these ones. These are the size of a car. Yeah, but this, well, this, that might have been it because it was a huge thing. So, um, also, when I forgot to say about when we're praying on attacks against dams, we can ask forgiveness for the sins concerning the waterways uh, mm-hmm. because there are all the druidic rituals that, that are done in the waterways to invoke the water spirits. And so, again, Satan would, if he's, you know, prompting people to do this, his kingdom is, he will use everything at his disposal to ensure that that is carried out, and those water spirits would would aid in that. And so we can ask God to forgive the sins of the waterways, any druidic rituals, to break that power. Um, and, and I think that always helps. You know, I think one of the things as you were sharing all this, it's uh, what came up in my spirit is that, you know, the hens are coming to roost kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times has the CIA or some uh, clandestine organization under under the deep state has used the United States to go and do these very things to overturn a government? They'll go and they will attack the infrastructure, they'll attack the, the power, they'll attack dams and different mm-hmm. things to cause such cr- chaos that it, there, it causes a regime change and uh, one of the things that uh, God put in my heart this morning is to begin to pray for the sins of America that where we have done that and, and not done it righteously, uh, but have done it for for uh, because the military industrial complex or other corporations 
wanted more favorable government yeah. in, in the, in the There's country. There's always more involved than what we are yeah, told. Yeah, we're never we're I mean, we're just told the tip of the iceberg of what really goes on, and so we just need to ask to God to forgive that and to directly judge uh, the things that were that were involved. And one of the things that I've been praying, you know, it's it's not even the operators on the ground. You know, if you if you have some spec ops guys, and they're being told, you know, go blow up this bridge, or go blow up whatever. Uh, that situation, I think, as far as heaven is concerned, doesn't hold those guys accountable. Who he holds accountable are the people behind the scenes that made the plans, that pulled the levers, that that gave the orders. And one of the things I've been praying is, God, you know, forgive America for the things that have been done, that if most of the American citizens would have known this stuff was going on, we would have been screaming at the top of our lungs not to do it. But those that were behind the scenes, the shady deals, the uh, and all that, Father, judge those behind the scenes that did it. I, I think there needs to be a cry out because, you know, you, you've even told me like there's a lot of times there will be witches will will try to cast spells and they'll put kids in between them and and the person they're doing it so that if it comes back it goes to the child or oh, they do it through the child. They do it through the child, and and God was beginning to tell me back then to begin to pray. It goes back to the original mm-hmm. sender. And I think that's what there's there are there are people behind the scenes, Mary, that are deep state that are no more they're they're not um they're international, so they don't care about America, they don't care about China. There's this no, there's and this that's international not saying agenda. That, that everybody in those letter agencies is bad. No, there's just there's a handful, but they're very powerful. And we need to just begin praying that God would allow the judgment for these things to go back on the individuals. Mm-hmm. Those that that were really in the know that were doing dastardly things, we we need for God to judge them. Well, and and this is not just we're not just saying this for America, because you know the World Economic Forum. It's all the same thing. They're they're all they the don't have gender. any respect for any uh, human life in any nation. But this is just a pattern God's given us, and uh, where He took me to read this week. As he was showing me all this, he said, go to Ezekiel 28. And so I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy... Tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, and thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Um, and I'll go back to that in just a second. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. And, you know, we know that this is, is a dual thing. Uh, he's talking about the king of Tyrus at that time, but it's also referring to Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And so Mike's going to go into that a little bit later, but I was just, I wanted to go ahead and finish this thought process here of what God was showing me. Um, I looked at uh, Matthew Henry about... Um, like the the word traffic, um, I, w- I was just trying to, to look at what this meant more. And so in Matthew Henry, it takes you to Amos 1.9, where it says, uh, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. And so let me tell you what then Matthew Henry says. It says... Uh, the peculiar sin of Tyre is delivering up the whole captivity to Edom, that is, selling to the Edomites those of Israel that fled to them for shelter, or in any way fell into their hands, not caring what hardships they put upon them, 
so that they could not make gain of them to themselves. Herein they forgot their brotherly covenant, the league that was between Solomon and Hiram king of Tyre, which was intimate that Hiram called Solomon his brother. Um, and then they put in a note, it is a great aggravation of enmity and malice when it is the violation of friendship and of a brotherly covenant. And so what I believe God was showing me, Mike, if I make mistakes here, you correct me because I haven't had a chance to go through this with you because you were, had been at the conference, the conference and, and had so much to do when you got back. Um, but what I believe God was showing me through this is the connection between the king of Tyre and what was done there that brought judgment uh, because the elite in this nation have broken the original covenant with the people. They have. And the elite have broken it with every nation, I believe, because, you know, when it was talk of, of the iniquity of the traffic, you know, when you, when you sell people, we've, these elite have merchandised people. They have. Well, that's part of what it, it claims that the Babylon has done. It sold the souls of men. And they've, I mean, they've essentially made the United States a trafficking center. Yes. And with what's going on at the border and all the children, they don't even know where they are. You know, we've got the defilement of the unborn that has been used for merchandising. <laughs> You've got the, the human trafficking element of it. You know as well as I do that this whole um, viral thing that was sweeping through the world, at the source of that, that, that was merchandising for money. <laughs> there was billions of dollars that was made. And drugs and all. I mean, yeah. that's... that's and, and, and so not only is the horrors of, of what's being done, but it's breaking every covenant. Absolutely. It's breaking the covenant that was made that, you know, that the government isn't, is supposed to protect the people. Well, there's, when we have a, a uh, constitutional republic, there is a covenant between the government and the people that it's by the people, of the people, and for the people, and they put our best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. That covenant's been broken uh, the covenant that when uh, industries create food, that it's going to be healthy, it, it's, it's not going to make us sick. You know, that, I, I outlined this in the Shiner Directive, that the same companies that create the Frankenstein foods are the same companies that run the medical industry, so they're creating their own... Their own yeah, they give you an illness, and then they have to give you the, you know, the answer to it, which yeah. is their, their drugs, sometimes unbelievably expensive. And, I mean, there's, there, there are laws in the books right now. Let's say that I found an herb, and I could, I could prove 100% it would cure a cancer or cure this. Did you know there are laws in the book that the moment that that can be proven, it has to be taken off the market. It's immediately classified as a Schedule One drug so that nobody has access to it. And there's a, there's a B vitamin, I, I forget, B17 or something like that, that they proved really helps with that, Mary. They snatched it up off the market. Once the, once the nutritionist could prove it actually worked, they snatched it up off the market. And I tell you what, you can't get it anywhere, and you can't even find it in a pharmaceutical. Why? Because it's about making money. Every, every, all, everything about Babylon is making money, and they see people as cattle. They, they, and it, it's, it's like with, uh, with Tyre. They just saw a way of making money. We're, we're going to take advantage of this crisis and forget about forget about the covenant. Forget about yeah. what well, the relationship that our king had with these people. We're going to make money, and we're we're seeing that with banks. We're seeing that in every single industry. It's across yeah. the board. It's the spirit of Babylon. Well, this this king, King of Tyre, as you're going to go into here in a little bit. I mean, he was being totally controlled by Lucifer. Absolutely. And so, um, and I what I, I kept getting is because these evil people have sown death that that's what will be reaped, because it says in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And so as I was going through all of this, uh, I felt like God was telling me to that we can bring this before him um, to stop what, what these evil people are doing, to bring it before his court. Um, and I think the reason that, that he showed me about the, the king of Tyrus was because the judgment that came there because of these things. And um, it's, it's like a precedent in, you know, a precedent in a court. Uh, it's, I wrote out the, the actual thing that says what a precedent is. 
uh, the definition, it says precedent refers to a court decision that is considered as authority for deciding subsequent cases involving identical or similar facts or similar legal issues. A precedent is incorporated into the doctrine of stare decisis and requires courts to apply the law in the same manner to the cases with the same facts. And, you know, the kingdom of darkness runs on legalism. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how we've seen through the years that, that Satan... Um, you know, he accused Job before God. You know, he's going saying, "Here's this, here's well, this." Hasatan means prosecuting attorney, right? And so, and so, I, God was showing me, you know, when we bring something before the court, we can bring precedents based upon His Word. If He's if He did it here, He can do it the same way. If if the same type of crimes are being committed, and that that's the importance of knowing the Word of God. When you go before the court of God. You have to do it based upon his promises of the word, not based upon how you feel, but based upon his promises, his conditions, his commandments, showing where the enemy has violated. And that, I mean, that's another reason for the believer to really get in the word of God so that we, we really understand. There, there's, a, there's a scripture that always jumps out at me that uh, the Bible says the children of Israel saw the miracles of God. But Moses is separated from that, Mary. It said that he understood the ways of God. Him understanding the ways of God opened the door for God to do the signs and the wonders. Mm -hmm. And we as believers, we need to get back in the word and allow God to show us the the ways of God, which many of them are very, they're they're legal. I mean, uh, you want to talk about legalism, if it hadn't been for God being extremely legal, we wouldn't have salvation because it was a legal precedent that Jesus gave his life for us and that that blood covers our, our sins. I mean, all of it's based upon on, on, on the law of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And when we learn how to flow in that, we become a nightmare to Satan because then we could come before the court of God. And so I, I think we need to take the word of God beyond the promise box to really, to really say, God, what are you requiring of me? Help me open my eyes to understand your ways as I understand your commandments so that I can understand legal precedent in the kingdom. Because, you know, if, if, we're, if we're being given delegated authority from him, we're to enforce the kingdom. But how can we enforce the kingdom? It'd be like we're, uh, the body of Christ is acting more like Barney Fife because we don't understand the law. We don't understand the uh, the commandments of God, and we and we're running around with one bullet, you know, with one bullet in the pocket that we never put in our revolver, and we don't understand the law. But when we do, then we that that that's what gives us the power between the authority and our comprehension of God's ways and God's laws. Allow us to legally draw a line in the sand and say, Saint, you're not crossing that mm-hmm. line. That's right. Well, he's he's crossed so many lines because right now. Um, it, it's part of the big setup, the big reset, if you want to call it that, to bring this invasion over the border. Yes. So, and and how how horrible this is. I mean, anybody in their right mind would know that this is not good for a nation. No. It's not good for a nation. And, and they're supposed to be defending the people of the nation. And so, to me, this just, it just goes right along with well, there's, what... Well, there's, there's a twofold hand to this, Mary, and Jesus warned us about it with the doctrine of Balaam that we read in the book of Revelation. And the doctrine of Balaam is you get the people of God descending that God lifts his hand off, or either that or God curses. And there's, there's two things going on. Number one, they have been systematically dismantling any morality out of our nation. Mm-hmm. Our children are indoctrinated yeah. towards sin. Our children are in danger from this. They really are. And number two, they're not securing the border. Ten million people have come across the border in the last three and a half years. Ten million. Mary, if just ten percent, just ten percent, are terrorists. Are terrorists? <laughs> are are I mean, military age, mm-hmm. whether they're terrorists, Chinese, uh, MS thirteen, or whatever, or could be recruited. That's that's know? that's yeah. one million potential soldiers against this nation. And it, it, it's, in, it's inconceivable to me that anybody with a logical mind would do that, unless you're well, seeking to topple the nation. That's exactly what it has to be. It's the only logical conclusion. So in all this, I know that we can ask Almighty God to forgive the sins of the use of this nation as a, as a merchandising center by the elite. 
Uh, we can ask forgiveness for the sins against uh, a covenant nation and the defilement of your word and your name, Father. We ask that you take this nation out of the hands of the elite and use it for the original covenant and for your purposes throughout the world. And Father, we thank you that you can provide safety in the midst of the calamity for your people and all that are going to be saved. I'm not, I'm not only praying for safety for those that are saved, but we've got to pray, you know, God sees the beginning from the end. He sees the ones that are going to be saved. Yeah. So we pray for their safety. And there's a promise at the end of Ezekiel, at the end of the chapter. It says in verse 25, Thus saith the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. They shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. And so I believe God's gathering his people together uh, in nations, you know, in, in local assemblies, others by the Internet like we are. We have, we consider covenant partners through the Internet. Absolutely. And, um, and we just ask that Almighty God would let those that despise your people, Father, let those that despise your people see that you are the Lord our God yeah. and that you can turn things around for our good. And that's that's what I think. There's no way that judgment. You know, I, most people think um, I think God just judges and just pours out wrath and pours out wrath like that. Like it's just. But when we sin to this degree, to where the cups running over <laughs> with iniquity, and you have this much innocent bloodshed and this much debauchery, judgment's already headed at us. Yes, it's it it's already coming. And so, what our hope is is that we can pray. And God will have mercy and mitigate some of these things. And so that's usually how God has used me for all these years, is he'll show me something, show me what to pray. And so if there's anything in this you guys want to grab a hold of and, and pray to over your areas, um, I just I think God's getting ready to pour out his spirit. And, and we're seeking his face on what we need to do here to help others and what he wants us to do. Absolutely. And so I'll just turn this over. Mike had some things he wanted to say about this. Yeah, I've, I've been kind of making some notes <laughs> here to try to, to jog my memory, and I did, probably didn't get them all down. You know, one of them, we mentioned how people are responding and crying and everything at the at an eclipse. That's a very rudimentary sign in the heaven. I mean, but look, if, if, if they'll do that then, what are they going to do when the when the false prophet shows up and creates false signs and wonders in the mm-hmm. heavens? This is how easily people are manipulated, and and I mean, people were driving cross country to see it. So, you, some of these people spent several thousand dollars to watch three minutes of darkness. Well, I th- don't you think some of this was people that are in the occult? Yep. To people in the occult, this would be like the great thing Big because time. Yep. because they would they would already been told about time X. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that jumped out, in, and uh, when, we, when we look at the king of Tyre, he, he violated the covenant of friendship. Why is he directly connected to Lucifer? Because there's in, in, in biblical hermeneutics, there's a, a law called the law of double reference. A law of double reference is, and you can it's real easy to pick out in Scripture. Remember when Jesus, when, when Peter said, I'm not going to let anybody crucify you, and Jesus turns around and says, I rebuke you, Satan. He was rebuking Peter and Satan both at the same time because Satan had inspired that response mm-hmm. out of Peter. And through so, his anger. Through his anger. Yeah. And so you, you can easily see that, well, with the, uh, the law of, of, of double reference, and I'm going to read this out of uh, Dake's notes. It says, here we see the first, refer- the first occurrence of the law of the double reference, and it's both in Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. In these and many other passages, a visible creature is addressed, but certain statements also refer to an invisible person using the visible creature as a tool. Thus, two persons are involved in the same passage, and the principle of interpretation is in such passages is to associate only such statements with each individual that could refer to him. Like when we read this in, e- in Ezekiel, you know, it says he was in Eden and walked in the, uh, among the stones of fire. Well, the king of Tyre couldn't have done that. Right. But as you were talking, one of the things that dawned on me, before God created the physical universe, and we don't know exactly when he created the immortals or the angels, okay? 
But the book of Job tells us that they sang at creation, that they watched him create the physical universe, and they sang, okay? And there, to me, because they, they were created first, they, they were the, 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 in other words, they're the elder race, if you will, there was a friendship and intimacy with God, that they're there before his throne. They get to see things that one day you and I hope to see. Lucifer was over the throne of God. and In fact, many of the scholars of rabbi believe that the throne of God is actually made up of, of angels. And the top canopy, the cherub that covers, is, is, was Lucifer. And so there, there was, a, a, in a sense, a, a type of intimacy there. And so when Lucifer fell, he violated a covenant of friendship with God the same way that the king of Tyre's descendants oh, did with the children yeah, of, of Judah. I can see that. And so there, there, was, there was great betrayal. They knew God better than Adam ever knew God. I mean, God would come down, Jesus would come down and walk with them in the cool of the garden. It was the very first thing he saw, and I've, I've taught about that in the, in the kingdom priesthood, the very first moments of, of Adam's life and how it's instilled into our DNA. The very first thing he saw was the face of God, and I go in, into all that. And the moment you're born again, what do you long to see? It goes right back mm-hmm. to what Adam first mm-hmm. saw. I long to see the face yeah, of God that, has, right. that there has been a veil put over. I can't see the face of God right now. We need to understand that I don't want to ever in my walk with God be associated with anything that Lucifer has done, anything the king of Tyre has done. There, there's a process of covenant. The very first covenant is blood covenant. The second covenant is a salt covenant, which is a covenant of friendship. And, you know, there's, there's four different covenants. There's the covenant of inheritance, the shoe covenant. The very final one is, is marriage covenant. That one of these days that we're we're going to be a part of yeah, the bride of it's Christ. Coming. <laughs> so when you 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 go from just what I call lackadaisical Christianity, okay, I'm covered by the blood. I got my Willy Wonka ticket, and some people never go any deeper. And I mean, it, it can be so much deeper. The second one, Jesus says, "I no longer call you servants; I call you friends." So those disciples had went from servanthood to the King to friendship with the King. If we get to that position and if we ever betray him, we're doing the same thing the king of Tyre had done. We're doing the same thing that Lucifer had done. That's why every inch that you you develop in your walk with God, don't let the devil get you to turn back. That's why Jesus said, those that walk with me, be, but turn back and, and turn back from the plow aren't worthy of me. Because he's, he's trying to take us from, there, there, are, there are four stages. Okay, servanthood. He's wanting to get you to be a friend of God. Isn't that what Abraham was? We sang song, you know, I am a friend of God. If you're truly his friend, you're not going to be doing some of the things that we're doing in the church today because that friendship is too good. I know him. I know his ways. I'm not going to do anything to violate or to hurt his heart in any way. When you get that attitude, that's when you get to go into the inheritance covenant. Why, why are some Christians seem to be walking in greater blessing? Now, there's some that appear to that are really dealing with Babylon. But, I mean, people like Henry Groover and, and so many others that we have seen that have really... Um, I, I even, uh, even thought of Dietrich Dudeman because I, I was down there with Michael Bodea. Dimitri, yeah. Yeah, Dimitri Dudeman. How that they put him in an electric chair twice and couldn't kill him. And then an angel shows up and heals him, tells him the day, the hour, and the minute that he's going to leave that country. Because they did, uh, in Romania, they decided, I can't kill him. We're going to, just going to throw him to the United States. Did you know when the, the Romanian officials thought, we're going, to, we're going to really blow him away and we're going to throw him out of the country. When they showed up to do it, his whole family was already packed. And he said, I've been expecting you. <laughs> but but I, I think that God was able to use him and do those things because he had such a heart for God that he was willing to do whatever he could to smuggle the Word of God into his country for the sheep. And in that process, he became a friend of God. And so when someone tried to kill the friend of God, an angel intervened. Mm. You see, that's, that's, that's the level that God's calling all of us to because God can... Tr- I, I, have, I have acquaintances that I can kind of trust 
but I only have a handful of people. And I, if you really think about it, we can think, you know, I, well, I have a million friends on Facebook. No, you don't. You have a million people that you friended, but that doesn't mean they're your friend. A friend, the Bible says God sticks with closer than a brother. There's, there's, this, there's this friendship that you know your friend and you would never do anything to violate their trust, to violate who they are, to ever hurt them in any way. I mean, that's real friendship. And a lot of times we see that developing in the military. And, I mean, it's drilled in the Marine Corps. I'm, well, their lives depend on each other. I mean, when, when you're in a foxhole, that's a brother. Yeah. And it doesn't matter about anything else. It's, it's the brotherhood because of, of your you become friends in the foxhole. And you watch each other's backs because you know nobody else has it. See, that's, that's true friends. And God says, when you get to the place that you're worried about my back, I got your back. Mm-hmm. When you're worried about if I'm grieved about something because it grieves you if it grieves yeah, me. That's right. That's right. That in the midnight hour when the enemy's coming at you and you feel you have no hope, I show up. Well, he does too. You see, there's God's calling. Lucifer threw away the friendship that he had with God for carnality and for self-centeredness. And what God is saying is, I'm replacing a bunch of these guys with the church. I, I love what um, Lester Summerall taught that that uh, after the, the 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 only place in, in the Word of God it ever talks about angels sing is when they sing at creation. And Lester Summerall and other theologians believe that when Lucifer fell, he took the choir of heaven with him. But there's a new choir. The Psalms all we're, we're going to sing a new song. Why 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 is it a new song? We're going to sing a song that angels never got to sing. We're his replacement. I think that, that parts of the body of Christ, some of the, the great men of God over the years, may end up being on the divine council that, that was abdicated by Lucifer and those that, that fell those principalities and powers, that we're going to rule and reign with him. We're the replacement. Do you think that Lucifer has any love for the replacement? No. None. But at the same time, God is saying, he broke my... Imagine this. God is sitting here, the Bible says he created the heavens and the earth. And then between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, there's the fall of Lucifer. Decimates the earth, decimates Mars. Rahab is shattered in all the warfare that's going on. And God says, here's how I'm going to fix this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to terraform the planet recreate the planet, and I'm going to create something called man, put him in the planet. And by the redemption of him, not only am I going to, not only am I going to get my friends back, my family back, but I'm going to judge those who violated my friendship covenant. Mm. That, that's, that's, that's asymmetric warfare beyond my understanding. And he's calling us deeper. The, the, the way to, one of the things, got, in, in fact, all the way home from Dallas, I was God. This bubble of my learning to lean, learning to lean. Mm-hmm. That this, this, this is this is a time, God. If there's anything between you and me, I want rid of it. I, I, I want to be like John. I want to be able to lean on your chest like he did uh, when when you were having the Last Supper. I, I want to be. I want to be that close to you that I can hear the heartbeat of God. In the days ahead, guys, it's going to be so paramount for us to learn to lean into God and develop that friendship and and learn from the things that we're talking about here. Once you get on that friendship, it gets better from there, but don't ever violate that friendship because if you ever violate that friendship, you'll never get into inheritance. What's inheritance, Mary? In my name, they will cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They will speak with new tongues, that they will bring down judgment. That's how we get to Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, that there will be those that know their God, that are intimate with their God, and they will do great exploits. They have become friends of God. And therefore, the power of God, the manifestation of the kingdom of God, is the inheritance that is given to the friends of God. And we have got to determine in our heart, I may have never seen anybody in my life that anywhere resembled a friend of God. I may have seen a lot of poor examples of it, but I'm going to get into the Word of God, and I'm going to have it established in my life. God, give me a vision of what a friend of God looks like. Yes, for sure. Give me, give me a vision of how to walk as a friend mm-hmm. of God. I, I, I feel like my heart's about to explode here because 
when, when, when you're a servant, a lot of times it's about me. God, give me. God, give me. God, give me. When you turn into a friend, it's, it's friend, what do you need? What do you need? What, what do you need me to say? What do you need me to do? What do you... Yeah. And, and God is looking for the members of the body of Christ, the remnant that are going to be all about him, because when we're all about him, he becomes all about us. Yeah, and that's just the opposite of what this king of Tyre was doing. Absolutely. He was using people. I've seen lots of users in my life that could care less about people. They just want them, they want them around them so they can use them. And, the, and that is absolutely following Lucifer's you know, character. I, re- I remember in, you know, studying spiritual warfare stuff, and I, I was kind of... He quick goes, you know, God plays chess. He doesn't play checkers. He plays chess. And he plays 12-dimensional chess while the devil's playing checkers. And uh, I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, wait a minute, God. Are you telling me that there are pawns in the kingdom? And and I, it's like I could hear the Holy Spirit says, you don't get it. To the devil, you look like a pawn, but you're carrying weapons of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, I he, he said, you could be my friend, and he don't know it, and he moves against you, and all of a sudden he has the worst day that he's ever had. Yeah, that's true. Because the devil, every piece on the chessboard for God is dear and is precious. He doesn't use anybody. He doesn't use anybody. He can orchestrate things for our good. He can. And you know, when, it, when it's our time to go, it's our time to go. But I want to be like the Apostle Paul. I want to say I've finished a race. I've, I've run the race. I've finished the fight. I don't have a, a thing left to do. And he was ready to go home. Because for all of us, the, the end game for us is all of us, for when we get into his presence, to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Knowing that he loved us and he had us every step of the way. And see, if I become a friend of God, to where I learn to lean onto his chest, and, and, I, and I'm attuned to his heartbeat. That's how we're going to survive the days ahead. All of a sudden, I start praying the things that he needs to be prayed to get his will done in the earth. All of a sudden, I begin to be, I, I get the vision of what he wants. I lay what I want down. We, we see it in the Psalms, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And we misread that all the time. When I delight in God, he puts new desires in my heart. The carnal things are crucified. The kingdom things begin coming alive. And when I'm on kingdom assignment, you know how did Dietrich Dudeman go through all that and end up in America? He was a friend of God. And he was on a kingdom assignment. And, and I, I know so many others. I remember there was a story of some people coming out of East Germany when I was over in Germany that uh, they got to the train station and they had everything set and the and the secret police had had German shepherds there to basically eat them alive, and they, they were ready to capture them and stuff. Those people prayed, and those German shepherds bowed down before them. And it's so astonished the soldiers. They let them get on the train and go. They, they, they that was supposed to be the moment they died, mm-hmm. and instead. Those dogs bowed down and whimpered instead of attacking. Yeah, there was a lion's den that they bowed down to. <laughs> I remember Henry Groover telling about a, a, he was down in, in Colombia, and God told him to go and witness to a Colombian drug lord. And he walked up at night by himself to the gate, and and he said, God has sent me here to give a word to to whoever the guy's name was. And, oh, you get out here. Get, no, no, God is. And they had two big Doberman pinchers. They suck those Doberman pinchers on them. Those Doberman pinchers come ringing up, and he said, I had no fear. I, I, I already died in Christ. I had no fear. And he said, those good boys come up there and set, let me scratch their ears. He said, made those guys with the machine guns in the background. They're so mad. And he said, I never got in. But he said, they saw a sign and wonder that yeah. day. That there That's was right. a man who came in the name of Jesus that had a word from God for them, and they couldn't touch him. Now, that way, God used used Henry yes. in a good way. Yes. But he doesn't use people in pernicious for, for pernicious reasons like no. the devil does. The devil no. uses people for you know horrible things, but God uses his people to get his, his will accomplished, and it'll always be a good thing. It's always a good thing. And what I what I well, I've said all that to say this, guys. Imagine the deepest that you could ever get in God. 
and you're still playing in the kiddie pool. We have so watered down our theology. We have so watered down everything in American Christianity that we're barely scratching the surface. When you become a friend of God, God says, you know, I need to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but i got to go talk to my friend before I do it because he's got family there. That's mind-boggling to me. Yeah. And Sodom and Gomorrah was not a little thing, Mary. Sodom and Gomorrah was a metropolis of about 2 million people. It was not a little village. And, there, and there, there's all kinds of archaeological stuff going out when that meteor or whatever it was that hit that took it out. It pulled the salt water out of that area, and it basically put it at about 3,000 degrees, and it basically just shot all the, because there's salt deposits, like, unbelievable. And we know scientifically now how Lot's wife turned into salt. She went back, she went back and got hit by that, that salt water blast of, of 3,000 degrees, and it instantly oh, turned her to a, a pillar sense. of salt. <laughs> And so, I mean, all the, all the things that we're seeing in the Word of God is, is coming up with archaeological mm-hmm. and scientific evidence of exactly proved. how it happened. Could you imagine God saying, listen, I need to go and judge Hollywood, but before I do, I've, I've got a friend that I'm going to go talk to. There's, and what I'm trying to say is there a level, there's a level of, of, of intimacy that God wants with us that we cannot even comprehend, that he would come to us and talk to us before he does judgment so that we can prepare and so that we can do. Remnant members, every single one that is a remnant member is called to that level with God. But the den of Babylon has kept us from it. They, they have taken over our seminaries, all the junk that we're seeing. Mary and I, they're, they're every once in a while, she'll pull up somebody on YouTube that I, there's a couple of them. I, I just love hearing anything they have to say. I may not agree with all of it, but I, 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 under, I understand and, and it agrees with my spirit as far as this guy's right with God. He may, he may not have it all perfect. I don't have it all perfect. No, we just but, may but, agree on, disagree on pre-trib, post-trib, all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> but, but, you know, some of, the, some of these guys, the moment they come on, I mean, the hair on the back of my head stands up and say, oh, my, no, no, that's wrong spirit. And, and it's proliferating. You see, all that din, all that craziness keeps us from being as close to God as we need to be. And right now I believe that if there's anything about this eclipse that does anything, it's God saying there's an open door, an open door to a deeper intimacy with him if we'll build our prayer closet. I, I had, uh, coming back, I just wanted to get home, and I was tired. I mean, we had a great conference. I got to meet Stanley and Leslie Johnson, wonderful people. Um, I met a lot of other people that I, I was wanting to meet. But by the time I got to Sunday morning, I was tired. Now I, I remember getting in the car and saying, "Father, you know where you know where Philip, you know you just translated him there, and he was able to talk to the <laughs> eunuch. It'd be nice for me to get out of this parking lot and pull into my driveway, you know, uh, and not have to drive the eight hours to get home." And God didn't do that. But what God did do is, I had a time of prayer and praise and worship all go. the way home. That was greater than the other. <laughs> that. Um, that made it feel like I was only on the road yeah. for a couple of hours. Now, my back and stuff told me, told me a little bit different. Yeah, you've been sitting in this car for eight hours. But uh, but for my mind and my spirit, it mm-hmm. was it was just I was caught up in, in singing, and I hit some bass lows I haven't hit in a long time, hit some highs I hadn't hit in a long time, and when I missed it, nobody could hear it but me and God anyway. But it, it, it was a time of rich fellowship. And I think that's what God is, is calling all of us to is – in the days ahead, and that there could be, a, we, we need to understand that the kingdom of darkness, the currency of Babylon is fear. It's fear. The, the currency of hell is fear. The currency of the evening news is fear. The currency of heaven is faith. And God is saying, if you're in me, you'll not respond in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And the more that I know him, I know that no matter what comes, he can get me through it, that he can have me where I need to be. If, if I have that friendship, if I'm hearing the heartbeat of God, 
Mary, when the prophecy hits the fan, God can have me standing on the only piece of soil that's safe. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. I, I, I've seen miracles of God. We, I mean, we, we've seen him pick up a semi and put it back on the right yeah. side of the road. We, we've seen He's a lot of things. He's done it over and over. He's done it. And God's hand is not short. Mm-mm. He's all powerful. That in the midst of this, we can have joy. In the midst mm-hmm. of this, we can have peace that passes all understanding. A lot of those scriptures were not given to a people that were just, that were just living in gravy. I mean, they were going through some hard times. Yeah. They were being persecuted by Rome. They were being persecuted by the Jewish people. And yet in the midst of that, Paul said, you can have peace that passes all understanding. Well, and, I, I had great peace even while you were gone. I sure missed you, but... I just had such a, a good time with, with the Lord. And uh, this is kind of a, a relief to me that, that we made it to, you know, I, I, back when I was telling you about Timex and all that stuff, I didn't know when it was going to be. And then when I figured out, you know, where these uh, two eclipses crossed and they were calling it X, and I thought, oh, this is it. This is that time that, that uh, all the occult people were told, hey, man, this is it. It's all going to turn the other way. And I, I, I'm so relieved because I spent all this time trying to, even on the podcast, there's probably things that I've said and people are saying, what is she talking about? I've been trying to tell anybody that's listening that has these back parts that were formed and were lied to, this isn't true. This isn't going to happen the way you've been told. No. You need to turn before this time happens because Absolutely. it's not going to be good for you. No, it's not. And so you know what? My time's over on that. I can yeah. go on to the next assignment God wants me to have because I did it, and it's here and it's done. One thing that came out, I've been kind of keeping an eye on the pneumatic fault. You know, uh-huh. It's down here in the, in the hills of Missouri. And one of the things in uh, Stan's luncheon thing that he did, and he was bringing out Scripture and prophetic words from uh, prophets that really have a track mm-hmm. record, and they talked about if, if – there is going to come a peace deal that's going to allow Israel to have access to the Temple Mount, but it's most likely going to be uh, creating the Palestinian state, so the land of Israel is going to be uh, divided. In fact, there's there's kind of back channels right now that even Jordan and, uh, and some of those other areas are actually going to give land to help create a Palestinian state. And he said this, he said, now, if America basically twists the arm to arms of Israel to force this, he said, because we divided the land of Israel, God will divide our land. Well, what is that? That's what Chuck Young, Brad, and so many other prophets I've talked about. A of lot that of going off, seen that, yeah. Uh, of that going off. And then he paused for a minute and he said, but here's the deal. If Israel decides to do it on its own and we're not forcing them to, then God won't divide the land. And so I think one of the things that we need to be praying is whatever that deal is going to be going on and how that transpires, that America will not force them to divide the land of Israel because if they do, if, if if I think this time when when it goes off, and a lot of the prophetic words, St. Louis is destroyed, Chicago is destroyed, the whole Great Lake areas is destroyed because it's going to be a lot of and it's going to it's going to rip the nation mm-hmm. in half, and it literally it's, it's going it's going to literally separate the nation, and if we pray that we're not involved, I think we can. Because so many, so many times when you when you read the prophets, they say God is going to do this, but if you repent and you do this, then this won't happen. This won't happen. This won't happen. I think this is one of those things that we have still have time to intercede that America yeah. won't be involved in that, so that we don't have that happen, yeah. guys. So that's something that we need to pray about. And folks, I just ask that God would give you a hunger for His presence, not only to know His voice, but to hear the heartbeat of God. That we would be attuned to him like no other, that we would become deaf to the world, that we would become deaf to the spirit of Babylon, and that we would only hear the voice of our shepherd, and that you would have a hunger for the word, and that you would have a heart that will realign your life to match the word of God, no matter what you've got to change, because you know it pleases the king, it pleases your savior, it pleases your God. And let us be a people of the word, a people of the kingdom, Father. Let us be a people that in no way do we ever grieve your spirit. Yes, we long to be your friend. We long to be your friend, Father. Let us enter into that friendship covenant in this hour, Father, we ask. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed.
informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.